Welcome to the Child Advocacy Center of Onslow County. I'm Kathleen Holbrook, the director. Here at the Child Advocacy Center, we evaluate all local children who are alleged victims of sexual abuse or physical abuse. Due to the confidential nature of what we do here, we have a locking mechanism on our door and our entrance is only to those who are immediately involved in the evaluation of those children. As soon as a child enters the Child Advocacy Center, we bring them into our family waiting room, which is right over here. And as you can see by looking around our room, this is a very child-friendly environment. A local artist, Karen Edwards, painted all of the murals on our walls and children immediately feel at home here. We have lots of activities that they can engage in and we allow children and the non-offending caregiver to have a few minutes to collect their thoughts and then our staff will come into the room and explain to them what is going to happen. We do not like discussing allegations of sexual abuse or child physical abuse in front of the child, so we take the parent across the hall to our private interview room so that the parent can be interviewed alone and we'll have the opportunity to speak with the various members of the team. So this is where the parent will meet with the investigator from DSS, from law enforcement, our medical provider who will go over the medical history with the family, and also with our forensic interviewer who will explain the process. During the time that the parent is here, our child and family advocate meets with the parent and does a needs assessment to determine the specific needs of the parent and the child. Children have different perceptions, they have a different mindset. So. The Child Advocacy Center is designed just for those types of cases when we have to interview children, especially about sexual assaults and, uh, and rapes and things like that. So things that, that are traumatic to the child, that's when we use the CAC. It's, it's really based upon the concept that what we're going to do is start to heal the child as we can as we do the investigation. As we prepare the child for the interview, we will take the child down the hall to the child interview room and explain what is going to happen in that particular room. So if you will please follow me there. And as you can see, we have additional murals painted on the walls here, which makes the children feel very comfortable. And then we come into this room here, which is our child interview room and we give the child an opportunity to choose where they would like to sit. Many children choose to sit here at the table because during the time that they're talking with the interviewer, they can engage in activities such as drawing pictures, writing, or playing with Play-Doh. Or they can sit over here in one of these comfortable easy chairs and talk with the interviewer. We have two cameras in this room so that the investigative team members who are part of the evaluation can watch the interview as it takes place live. So we have one camera on the wall here and we have another one up there in the corner. And we tell the children in advance that they are going to be on camera and that team members are observing them. But because the cameras are unobtrusive, they immediately forget about the cameras. We also have two microphones, one in the ceiling and one over here on the wall and that way the team can pick up anything that the child says. We review it on a screen in a separate room while the interview is taking place. If the child is, you know, apprehensive about talking to law enforcement or seeing law enforcement, um, they don't have to have any contact with us before the interview begins. We're behind the scenes um, before the interview and after the interview is complete and then at that time we make contact with the parents and a lot of times we do make contact with the children at the center but it's after the interview is complete. We kind of introduce ourselves and kind of interact with them a little bit you know, just to kind of get them comfortable with us. This is the team observation room which is where the members of the investigative team sit throughout the interview. So we have a big screen TV where they can watch the interview take place live as it is occurring and the interviewer and the child would be alone in that room. In this room would sit the Child Protective Services investigator from the Department of Social Services, the law enforcement detective assigned to the case, our medical provider observes the interviewer 
or the interview taking place and then any member of the team who might be involved would be in here as well. If the child is already involved with the court system and a guardian ad litem has been appointed to the child, then the guardian ad litem would be sitting in here as well, observing the interview. And at times in high profile cases, one of the assistant district attorneys will join us for the interview. Right before the interview is complete, the interviewer will come into our room and if there's any follow-up questions we want answered or anything that we want the interviewer to go in and touch on, um, we can discuss that at that time. The interviewer goes back into the room, speaks with the child again, and wraps up the interview. The police officer, when they were interviewing before, they interview in five or six different places. They go to the DA's office and the child has to recant what happened. They go to DSS and the child has to recant what happened. They go uh, to the counselor and the child has to recant what's happened. Here's one time we get all the information we need for the prosecution and we start that healing process. And this is our medical room where children will receive comprehensive medical evaluations. All of the children we see here are here because allegations of sexual abuse or physical abuse have been made. But we do not focus on the injuries that they may have incurred. We do a comprehensive head-to-toe evaluation of that child. So we look in their eyes, their ears, their skin. We evaluate every inch of them and we have already gone over the medical history with their parent. While we are conducting examinations for sexual abuse, we use this piece of equipment here which is called a culposcope and it magnifies up to 34 times what the human eye would see. Even when penetration has been alleged with children, we do not do any kind of internal examination. Everything we look at on the child is done externally by using this culposcope. It is a high-powered microscope. It has a flashlight attachment to it, and then we can project the images on a laptop and take still photos. That way the child does not have to lay for an unnecessarily long time on the exam room table. The doctor can look back on the photos at a later time and determine it, whether or not there are any injuries. The center opened in 2010 and since then 589 children have, have come through the center. And it's, it's one stop, you know, gathering the physical evidence, the forensics, the interview is all done at the same time and all the disciplines are there. So you have the district attorney, you have DSS, you have police, and you have the Child Advocacy Center, which also provides counseling for that child and follows that child through the entire process, again, to make that child whole again. The quilts are made by community volunteers from various quilt guilds and they make quilts for all of the children who receive medical evaluations here at the Child Advocacy Center. So for us, that's more than 200 children per year. And the quilts are all handmade, and they have labels sewn into them with little sayings on them, indicating that somebody is thinking about that child. These are very significant to the children because it's something that they can keep and look at later on, and parents tell us how much it means to their children to have this quilt. What the CAC is doing is, is honoring these officers for their commitment to make the child whole again. My whole focus of coming into law enforcement was just to work with children. Even on patrol, any cases that come out, any calls that involve children. I have three of my own and um, I feel that they're, they have a voice and, and hopefully I can be the one that can speak for them if they need us to. like to invite members of the Jacksonville Police Department to come on down. We have another great team of individuals here led by Chief Mikey Nero, who I always say has been our biggest cheerleader from the beginning. Chief Nero has been there every step of the way and he has inspired his staff to assist us in ways that we could never imagine. Anytime we've had a problem, 
we've gone to Father Yanero here to help us out with solving that issue. And uh, that is just incredible. So we would like to thank you so much for all of your contributions because we couldn't do it without you.